Well, praise the Lord. We're going to, we've got a little treat for you this morning, so it'd be to have you stay still just for a moment. I asked Stan to come and sing a song for us this morning. So he's back there being tortured by the children. And uh, he'll be out here in just a, just a moment. It's the greatest thing. Who's going to help me? I mean, I need some participants today. Would you help me? We're in the presence of God. Jesus is here. He said, wherever two or more are gathered, he said, I am there in the midst of that. So you know this, I'm going to do a song that you know. Okay? You might not understand because I might stutter or stumble or something like that. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain in the name of the Lord. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain in the name of the Lord. Come well, on, you know this. <coughs> Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain in the name of the Lord. You're going to start moving, Mike. Speak to the mountain in the name of the Lord. We are standing on the rock of ages, not to consider. Facing, we all have those. The stand was saying, and uh, 
I said this before, I, if I have a mountain in front of me and it's a matter of life and death, but that mountain be removed, you can believe I'm going to be speaking to it and uh, leaving to get through it or over it or whatever it takes. But, but, but we serve a faithful God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want to begin this morning uh, with 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. And there it reads, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now the word walk here is talking about how we live our lives. You know, we've heard the saying, different strokes for different folks. Well, basically what that is talking about and referring to is different lifestyles and different cultures. And the mere fact that you are a Christian this morning tells me that you are walking by faith because you proclaim that you are a believer. If I were to ask you this morning, are you saved? I would hope at least all of you would raise your hand and say, I am saved. And if you have any question about that, you can take care of that before this service is over. Amen? But if I were to say, are you saved? I believe most of you, probably all of you, would say, yes, I'm saved. And then I would say, well, how do you know you're saved? If I would say, can you show me your salvation? And you probably have to go, well, no, not really. Can I, can I feel your salvation? Can you hand it to me so I can feel it? Can I smell it? Can I taste it? No, I can't do any of those things with the five senses, can I? But yet, you tell me you're saved, and you know you're saved. Then my next question for you might be, are you going to heaven? And I believe that probably all of you would say, yes, I'm going to heaven. And again, if you have any question about that, don't leave today without settling that question, amen? That you know that you're going to heaven. But if I would say, can you show me heaven? Hey, get a map out and show me where heaven is. You can't really do that. Because you know you're saved by faith, and you know you're going to heaven by faith. I mean, you can't say, yeah, you go to the moon, take a ride, head over to Mars, then up past the sun, and, and, and you know, a trillion miles out, there's heaven. Or, you know, you can say, well, no, it's in my heart. Or, or, I mean, but you can't prove any of that to me, can you? Through the five senses. You can't show me heaven. You see, we know we're saved by faith, and we know that we're going to heaven by faith. It's a knowing that is in your spirit because you believe the Word of God concerning the gift of of salvation. And whenever you believe the word concerning the gift of salvation, you receive salvation and you know you're going to heaven, but you do it all by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. And because we walk by faith, we have different interests than the world has. At least we ought to. Amen. It says we are to be a peculiar people. In other words, we're to be different. We're to be sanctified. We're to be set apart unto the things of God rather than the things of the world. You see, it's our desire to please Him more than uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, please the world or those that are around us. We want to please Him. It's our desire not to store up treasures on this earth but it's our desire to store up treasures in heaven because we know that we are mere pilgrims here. We're just passing through, but we are on our way to uh, the place where our true citizenship really lies, amen, because we're citizens of heaven, and we know that that is our final destination. We're only here for a brief moment compared to eternity, but many act like this is what it's all about. It's all about the here and now. It's all about this measly 70, 80, 90 years that we spend on this earth when we'll spend a trillion plus, trillion times, a trillion in eternity. And yet, why as believers would we be so focused on the here and the now? You see, 
It's not to say that we can enjoy because God has said we can enjoy, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. He says all these things. All these things that the Gentiles seek can be added unto you. So it's not a sign of spirituality to be poor, and it's not saying you're carnal because you have nice things. But the important thing is that you have the things, the things don't have you. Amen? The important thing is that you would be willing to lay it all down if God were to call you to a purpose where you wouldn't have those things. Amen? I mean, if God were to call you to go to China and minister, that you would be obedient to that call. But here's the good news. I think somebody said this the other day, that you know God gives you the desires of your heart. So if you uh, uh, are called to go to China, God will put that desire in your heart to go to China. Amen? And sometimes it may take a while for that to happen, but God will give you the desires. Then He fulfills those desires. Amen? Amen. So to walk by faith means to trust God regardless of the circumstances. And that's why I want to stand and sing that song. Because we are to put our trust in God regardless of the circumstances. We trust God in the light of His Word, the Holy Bible. Amen? Back when Cheryl and I first got married, I was a mere 23 years old. And uh, we, we got married. We were living in Florida. And uh, we, we I'm not going to go through the whole story here, but we were attending a church called Palmasolo Bay Baptist Church. It's one of the greatest Baptist churches I've ever been in in my life. I mean, there was a freedom. <clears throat> there was a, uh, just a, the pastor uh, was a former base, professional baseball player, Mike Brumley. And uh, he was just a great preacher. But he said something then. I wrote it down in my Bible at that time. And it stuck with me all these years. He said, never doubt in the dark what God has spoken in the light. And that was quite a few years ago. And that's, that stuck with me that whole time. Never doubt in the dark what God has spoken in the light. We need to trust God despite the circumstances. Amen? Yeah. It requires faith to walk this way because much of what we believe is unseen because it's of a spiritual nature. You know, you, you, uh, you, you can't see or hear or feel or taste or touch spiritual matter. You know, things such as salvation and things such as heaven. And when we live according to God's Word, it goes against the world's thinking. We're seeing a greater contrast now here in America more than ever before. Amen? I mean, it's, it, it's really getting to where you're, you're having to stand up for your faith. You know, it, it's, there, there's a line being drawn in the sand. And unfortunately, many are just getting wishy-washy and not standing up for thus saith the Word of God. But we must stand up for the Word of God. And instead of trying to get all we can get, we have an attitude we want to give all we can give. Amen? Especially toward kingdom matters. I mean, you, you go to a, 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 a carnal person or a... a, a, a you know, I don't want to call them heathen because that sounds like you're calling them names, but that just basically means an unbeliever. But you go to an unbeliever and talk about, well, you know, I, I give 10% of my money as a tithe unto the Lord. And they say, are you crazy? Why in the world would you do that? But, you know, to a believer who understands and trusts God, they want to give a tithe, 10% of their first fruits, as the Bible calls it. And it's not out of a legality thing. It's not out of, I have to do this or God's going to crush me. No, it, it's a trust issue. It's saying, God, I trust you and I'm going to give back my first fruits and I know that you're going to bless that. And you know, God's not going to come down and rain terror on you if you don't do it. But there's such a blessing in giving. Amen? There's such a blessing in giving back and saying, God, you know, I trust you in this. But not just that, but any area of life, our time, uh, uh, you know, just our, our, our affection. There's so many things that we want to give as believers. But the world would think that's crazy, amen? Why would you do that? Just You're giving them your time to be here on a Sunday morning. You know, you go to somebody who's not a believer, they go, I can't understand you getting up and going to listen to some guy talk for a half an hour and sing some songs. You could be sitting home catching up on uh, work around the house or you could be uh, sitting home and 
watching television relax, and after all, you work five or six days a week. You know, you, you could be out on the golf course, but here you are, worshiping God. You see, we have a different lifestyle. We have a different walk because we believe. When the world's screaming immorality is all right, we stand firm in what the Word of God says. You know, there's a scripture that says in the latter days, they'll be calling that which is good evil and that which is evil good. If you don't think you're living in the last days, I say wake up. Because you have never seen that more. And unfortunately, it's seeping into the church. And, and, and many churches and preachers don't have any backbone. And they'll just start saying, well, that ain't so bad. That's all right. And, and before you know it, you know, there, there's not standing up. And I'm not saying we're to condemn. I'm just saying we're stand up for the truth because the truth will set you free. If we get caught up in all these other things, it does. sin has a backlash. And if you love your brother, you'll want to restore your brother. Amen? And it's nothing to do... I mean, we all make mistakes. Amen? It's not like we're trying to say anybody's better than anybody else. We're just saying the, the, the Word of God tells us the answer. And if we'll follow the Word of God, we'll have the best quality of life that we could possibly have. And we also have to be, we have to, uh, as we walk by faith, we have to be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is saying. We make a decision to live according to God's Word and not our own understanding. In uh, Psalm, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, it reads there, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Listen to this part. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. See, that's walking by faith. We are trusting God and His Word despite the circumstances. We do not trust human knowledge. We trust God knowledge. I believe Father knows best. Amen? We do not turn to human knowledge. Human knowledge says we come from apes. God knowledge says we have a creator and a maker and His name is God. Amen? Walking by faith looks to God for guidance every day in every area of life. We look to Him, trusting Him. He will guide us. And there's no better guide or more trustworthy than our Creator. Now, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Listen to what it says there. Now, faith is, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I want to read that to you out of the Amplified Bible. No, I'm not going to read it louder. I'm, uh, I'm going to read a, a little more detail. It reads out of the Amplified Bible. Now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation, title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. And that's a great translation of that verse right there. I particularly like the term title deed. Faith is the title deed. You know, I could sit here in this building and buy a piece of property in Colorado. And they could give me a legal title deed to that property in Colorado. And I would know I own that property, even though I've never seen it, I've never smelled the grass, I've never seen the sun over it. I would know that that's my property because I have the title deed. And that's what faith is. When we put our faith in the promises of God, that's our title deed that it's ours. We don't have to sit... You know, I have my title deed to heaven because I put my trust in God and in the Lord Jesus Christ for giving His life and sacrifice on the cross and rising from the dead. I, I have a title deed. My faith is my title deed to heaven. And you know what? Heaven's my hope. You see, I don't hope I'm going to heaven. My hope is in heaven. You know, you talk about you be going to heaven. I hope. 
No, that's like, well, maybe I will, maybe I won't. No, my hope is in heaven. I've said this before, I have no plan B. You know, if Jesus is not the way, I'm in trouble. But I mean, I have put all my eggs in one basket because I have faith. That's my title deed. That's my, I know that I know that I know I'm going because I thoroughly trust the Word of God and what the Word of God says about faith and accepting Him and going to heaven. It's my title deed. So again, it's our faith in God's Word, His promises, that we have assurance of the things hoped for. <coughs> we have to renew our minds to trust His Word. That's the big part of Christianity right there, is renewing our minds. If we do not learn how to renew our minds, well, how do we do that? By the Word of God. It says being transformed in Romans 12, to being transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, that's quit thinking the way the world thinks and think the way God thinks. How do we do that? By reading God's love letters to us. Amen? And that tells us how to think. And it's a better way of thinking. We renew our minds. We need to become word-rated. You know, I shared a whole series on being word-rated. And I shared... Uh, the example of how pilots have to go through training that's called instrument rated. Because you, when you're in the air flying, sometimes, like in a storm or, or under different circumstances, you can get what's called vertigo. And what that means is, if you have vertigo, you, you don't know if you're going up, down, or you know, upside down. You just lose all sense of direction. And you may think you're going straight forward, but in reality, you may be going straight down. Or you may feel like you're going straight down, but in reality, you're going straight forward. So to become instrument rated, that pilot has to learn to trust the instrument panel more than they trust how they feel. And that's what we have to do with the Word of God. We have to become Word rated where we trust what God's Word says more than what we feel. That's being word rated. That's renewing our minds. You see, it says things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hope is the desired picture. You know, your hope is always a picture. When I say you're going to heaven, all of you have a picture of heaven. And I say, are you going to heaven? You say yes, because faith is the ink that paints in, fills in that picture of hope, which is heaven. That goes with any area of our lives. In your mind, you see heaven, and faith makes that a reality. In your mind, you desire healing. Faith makes that a reality. But you need to see yourself. You see, the thing is, a lot of us pray... And we just keep seeing ourselves in this bad situation when we need to see ourselves in a good situation. Amen? I, I've said this before. Uh, 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 there's a confession uh, of faith. And basically, that's what, well, all that's saying is I believe what the Word of God says about my situation. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I believe what the Word of God... I know I feel this way. I know it may look this way. But I believe. You know, you, you may uh, look at your checkbook and see nothing but red ink. But you say, but I believe God supplies all my needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus. You see, I'm not just looking at the circumstances. I'm looking by faith at His promises. And although it looks this way, I do not believe what that says. I am going to confess what God's Word says. But before you can have a confession of faith, sometimes we need to have a confession unto faith. What is that? That's where you're speaking the word, but you don't quite believe it yet. And if we're all honest, we've done that, amen? We're saying one thing, but man, our minds go in a totally different direction. But what, what you do is you just keep speaking that promise. You keep saying it because, listen, faith comes by Hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You know, fear comes the same way. If you just keep talking about how big your mountain is and how impossible your situation is, 
then that's all you're going to see. And what you see is what you're going to get. But if you stand on the promises of God and say, I know it looks this way, but I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm believing God's Word. I'm speaking God's Word. And, and, and I'm the, what you do when you speak God's Word, you're depositing that down into your spirit, into your heart, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So that confession unto faith at some point turns into a confession of faith. And all of a sudden, now you're saying it, but you're not just saying it. You know that you know that you know that you know that you know what you say is going to come to pass because you're speaking it out of the faith that is developed in your heart. And now you see that picture and you see yourself accomplishing that. Amen. See, the reason it's so easy to believe that we're going to heaven by faith is because we've heard that since we were little kids. But we've heard that God may not heal you today. We've heard that God may not supply your needs. We've heard that God may put you, be putting you through a fiery furnace. And we go, well, we just don't know what God's will is. I say read His Word and find out what His Word is. Stand on that promise and it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. I like that. By His stripes, the Word of God tells us. We were healed. 1 Peter 2.24 He's catching up with myself a little bit now. Romans 10.17 Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. Let me talk just a little bit more about that. You see, you see yourself doing something you couldn't do before. You meditate on that. Faith is calling those things that be not as though they were. Again, we go back to that checkbook or we go back to those symptoms or whatever it may be. Listen to Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, talking to Abram, Abraham, Abram at that time, in the presence of him whom believe, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Now, you know, Abraham is a perfect example of this. Sarah is a perfect example of this. Sarah was Sarai, and Abraham was Abram. God gave a promise. He said he's going to uh, give them uh, uh, children, many children. Amen. And he's, uh, after that promise, they both their names were changed to Abraham and Sarah. And Abraham means father of many nations. And Sarah means mother of a multitude. And they started calling each other Abraham and Sarah. And they were childless. I want you to think about that for a moment. You know, Abraham's out in the field working and Sarah says, Abraham, time to eat. I'll be right there, mother of a multitude, Sarah. But she said, father of many nations, mother of a multitude, Father of many nations, mother of multitude, and they had no children. Neighbors are going, they done gone crazy. <laughs> Here they're calling each other these names, and they don't even have any kids. You see, people think you're crazy whenever you're in a, in a situation, your circumstances look hopeless, but yet you're talking home. You're not just talking it, but you're believing it, and your faith is being deposited into that situation into that circumstance. You're speaking to your mountain. You've heard this said many times, but you know, don't talk to your mountain, or don't talk to God about how big your mountain is. Talk to your mountain about how big your God is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Matthew 9.29, listen to what it says. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be done unto you. You know, we could talk so much. We could do a series on faith. But the bottom line is faith is just putting your trust in God despite the circumstances. Amen. Someone did an acronym one time. I think it was faith forsaking all. I trust Him. I think it comes out. Faith. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah. Forsaking all. I trust Him. Okay, we talked about faith a little bit. Let's go ahead and talk about how do we obtain faith. In Romans 12, verse 3, it reads, Therefore I say through the grace given to me, 
to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Here's the part I want you to see. As God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. We have all been given the faith that we have. Each one. We've all been given a measure of faith. However, we understand that it's only a measure. You know, we have all been given muscles. Everybody just do this. Now do it to your neighbor. No, don't do that. But you know what the guys do. You can reach them. <laughs> We've all been given muscles. However, we can further develop our muscles. Amen? We all have faith, but we can develop our faith. Now, I'm working on that. Cheryl and I go to the gym faithfully three days a week. Three nights a week. And we run into... Uh, Tony Jr. and Charity there, three nights a week, they go as well. We run into Annie, oh, she's not in here. Well, anyway, we, 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 we do it faithfully. And uh, yeah, I'm working on these guns. <laughs> Doug, pretty soon I'm going to come over and not lift them yet. <laughs> you know, I think I lift 60, he lifts 600, but you know, I'm working on it. <laughs> but you see, I, I can already feel the difference. Just from what I do, I, I can feel the difference. I mean, I've already increased just in the time I've been there, I've increased what I live by about 40 or 50 pounds, which may not sound like a lot, but you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's what I, I mean, what I could consistently live a number of times before that I can do it now. And if I keep at it and keep increasing, hey, it won't be long until, you know, instead of lifting 100 pounds and doing it, I'll be, lifting, I'll be working out with maybe 150 pounds or 200 pounds. You see? So we can develop uh, our muscles. And uh, uh, it, 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 on the other hand, if you do nothing, then you get what they call muscle atrophy, I believe is what they call it. And that's where your, your muscle just disintegrates, basically. In other words, use it or lose it. Amen? That's the way our muscles work. If you don't do something to strengthen them, then they'll just get weaker and weaker. If you just lay in the bed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there will come a time you couldn't lift a glass of milk up to drink it because you'd be too weak to do it. So we need to develop our faith. How do we do that? Hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. It's also important to spend time in God's presence as well. Of course, read His Word as being in His presence. Just talking with Him. The more time you spend with a person, the more you trust them if they're trustworthy. Amen? Like I've said this about Mike before. I, you know, I can't say this about many people, but well, there's a few others I can mention. But I, I would trust it with my life. They're, they're, I mean, there's very few people that you, you know, I think any of you can say that about. Amen? That there would be no doubt whatsoever. And I can name a few, but I don't want to go any further than that, because then if I don't name your name, <laughs> like, oh, what's wrong with me? <laughs> But it's spending time in God's presence. Again, another word for faith is trust. If I trust you, I have great faith in you. And the more time you spend with God, the more you're going to trust Him because the better you would know Him. In, in Daniel 11, verse 32, it reads there, But the people who know their God shall be strong, and carry out great exploits. You see, it's important that we get to know God. Amen? See, there's a lot of people that are saved that really don't know God. I mean, they know Him in the fact that they have a relationship with Him. But it's kind of like, for some Christians, it's like getting a male older bride. You know, they, they, they come from another country somewhere, and you get married, and then you send them back to the other country. And, you know, you're married to that person, but you don't really know them. You haven't developed a relationship with them through fellowship. And there's some Christians that just don't take the time to develop a relationship with the Lord. Amen? So you, you know them, but you don't know them. We really need to get to know Him. In closing, find God's 
promises in his word and begin to declare the promises of God. And see his promise being fulfilled in your life. Picture yourself as the word declares you to be. And I'm going to close with this last verse. And it reads in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. For all the promises of God in Him are yes and amen to the glory of God through us. Church, God has made many promises. And I was going to take some time this morning and read about seven pages of promises to you. But I didn't want to lose you. But I did do this. If you're interested, I typed them all up, the verses. And we'll give these to you. And I'm just going to go through the different categories. And there's verses of Scripture under each category. I mean, you can buy books. I mean, there's a lot of material out there like this. This is just a condensed version. But if you have an area with addictions, there's promises for it. Amen. Deliverance from demonic harassment, there are promises for it. Depression, there are promises. Family, fear, feeling of the Holy Spirit, finances and jobs, forgiveness, guidance, health, marriage, companionship, salvation and God's love, strength to do God's will. So that's just a few. But again, there are books out there with hundreds of pages of God's promises. I'm going to make this available. You know, there's probably at least enough here for one per family. And uh, I'll put them. Mike, would you just do that real quick? Would you just set that back in the back, toward the back there on a chair? Feel free to grab me a copy of that. And, and uh, I encourage you just to take time and read those. And meditate on them. Get them down in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Promises of God are yes and amen. Isn't that good news? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises that are written. And Lord, I just pray for this Crosswalk Fellowship family. Lord, that uh, we would not neglect your great salvation. Lord, that we would be open to receive all your goodness and all your promises. And Lord, I just ask that you would help us uh, as we receive your love to share your love with others that are in need of your love. And Father, uh, as we approach uh, next Sunday, which we call Easter, Resurrection Day, Lord, the, the day of year that we just put particular emphasis on the risen Christ. Lord, I just pray that uh, uh, for next Sunday, that uh, for those that are able to be here, that, Lord, you would just have a word that would uh, bring uh, life-changing results. And, Lord, I just pray that you would put it on our hearts to invite others that perhaps uh, uh, don't attend church regularly, Lord, that uh, they would uh, come and be with us. And, Lord, that you would speak to their hearts as well. And, Lord, this morning, you know the needs of your people. And Lord, for those that are here that have a, a need of healing or uh, have need of financial needs or spiritual needs, emotional needs, whatever they may be, Lord, we just stand upon the promises of your word and we just believe for victory. And Lord, help each of us to uh, uh, just, just speak to us, Lord. Remind us, I pray, that we can renew our minds according to your word, that we might be transformed and changed into your image. And Lord, we're just careful to give you all the praise for all that you're doing in our lives. Hallelujah.